Here on Colour of Country Life, Flow FM, catching up with Primary Industries Minister Claire Scriven. How are you, Claire? I'm well, thanks, Ricky. How are you? Uh, Very good, thanks. And uh, our ears pricked up when we heard about this initiative in Wakery. You're going to be trialling a program to replace people's fruit trees, but I guess there's some conditions attached. Just explain why the government's looking into this. There's been a number of outbreaks of fruit fly that have come from backyard trees. Now, so some people that's, uh, you know, just a little garden with maybe one or two fruit trees, but others, it's perhaps areas that used to be uh, the orchards but no longer are. And we know that people want to do the right thing. Uh, it's really important for you know all of South Australia, but particularly the Riverland, to have the pest-free status um, back again in the Riverland. Uh, but sometimes people just don't perhaps have the ability to be picking up their fruit, checking their fruit, particularly if they're elderly or, or other reasons prevent them from doing it. So what we're offering here as a trial in Wakery uh, is that people will be able to volunteer to have their fruit trees removed and replaced with a more appropriate species. Uh, so there's you know, a couple of benefits there. Potentially a person has a, a bit less work to do in their backyard, but we also uh, can then gauge to see whether that helps in terms of getting on top of fruit fly. So it's a, it's a win-win. It'll be a pilot for Wakery, uh, and we're doing that in conjunction with the Loxton Wakery Council. Uh, and then if we get some good results from that, we can look at whether we can expand that program to elsewhere in the Riverland. I recall being out for a walk with my young son once in Berry and a lady called out to me saying a senior citizen saying I've got a locut tree and I can't reach the fruit at the top can you do you want to pick it you can take the locuts it's sort of a case in point isn't it uh, that uh, it potentially does have that benefit and uh, nowadays people can get a tree that will sort of limit its growth to about two or three meters and be more manageable that's right. Or they might like to have, for example, uh, you know, a native species that's purely there for uh, yeah, as a decorative purpose, and then there'll be you know, less water as well as perhaps less upkeep. So uh, yeah, there's some real opportunities there. And with fruit fly, we know that we've had you know a large number of outbreaks, and it's a matter of trying to address it on lots of different levels. So the the commercial growers have been working hard to eradicate it. We want to make sure that um, that, that residents too have got the tools they need to help them in this fight against fruit fly, which is so important for all of this. So in this Wakery trial, just to clarify, uh, the replacement tree that would be considered, is it another fruit tree potentially or it's preferably one that isn't fruiting? Uh, preferably one that's not fr- not a fruit tree or not a, a species that, that um, is subject to fruit fly. Uh, I see. All right. Uh, well, I imagine metropolitan people might be excited if that trial gets any legs, but we'll see how it goes in Wakery <laughs> first. Um, just on that fruit fly front as well, I understand that um, local residents can also move fruit around more easily now so long as they're carrying proof of purchase. That's right. If they've purchased fruit from a supermarket, uh, then they will be able to move that around uh, within the area as long as it's in a bag and they have their receipt with them. So what happened was um, under the previous government, that sort of fruit movement was uh, was banned. Uh, but it's a little unclear why, to be honest, because before fruit can go onto retail shelves in, in the supermarkets, it has to have already been certified as free of fruit fly. So before it gets anywhere near the, near the stores, um, it's already certified in that way. So it makes sense for people who have bought fruit from the supermarkets, it's already been through that whole process, to be able to move that around within the Redland. Now speaking of moving things around, the Royal Adelaide show is coming up, which is a great opportunity and good to see it's back up and running again uh, in full flow after we've had restrictions in recent years. But uh, there are going to be some biosecurity related restrictions and what role has the state government played in relation to that? Yeah, it looks a really important point. I think we're all glad to have the Royal Show back again. I'm certainly looking forward to, to getting there. Um, one of the things that we'll have is, um, is foot mats as people enter into the showgrounds entrances. So they won't probably even notice perhaps that they're walking across the uh, citric acid foot mats, which will help to disinfect their shoes. Uh, people need to make sure if they're going into the livestock areas that they're they're um, they've got clean clothes, clean clean shoes. Uh, they're washing their hands and so on. And uh, except in the animal petting areas, uh, people won't be encouraged to be touching the animals. So that's that's all uh, part of the the biosecurity approach that we all need to be uh, be sharing in. Now, it just occurs to me there's a show in regional New South Wales that's attracted some attention for saying they won't let people go to the show if they've been to Indonesia recently. I gather you've taken a step that's probably not as draconian as that. 
Look, if people have been uh, in on farms overseas um, or in contact with animals, we uh, recommend that they don't go anywhere near animals for seven days after their return. So that's a, a strong recommendation. Uh, and so we would hope that people would be very conscious of that. We know that you know, foot and mouth disease is in Indonesia and uh, you know there's a, a rules free pronged approach from uh, Australia to try and address that. One of those is trying to stop it getting in across the borders and, and the sorts of things we just talked about as part of that. One of them is uh, you know, helping our neighbours in terms of vaccines and uh, technical information to try and get foot and mouth disease under control in, within their own borders. Uh, and the third is making sure, of course, that uh, here in Australia we are ready in the event that there was an incursion. But yeah, there are no, no incursions at the moment and if we're all vigilant, we can make sure it stays that way. Great. Well, the Royal Show will be a, certainly an opportunity to reinforce the importance of biosecurity as well. Primary Industries Minister Claire Scriven, enjoy your time at the show. Uh, we look forward to catching you again soon. Thank you very much.